but I'm female and I'm beyond 32. So, <laughs> to conclude, I'm not an OSM mapper. <laughs> so, why am I here? So, actually, um, so I'm, I'm working at Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer is doing applied research, and uh, in, in my group, we are um, doing quite a lot of projects in business geomatics. Like um, the question, where should I open a location, or, or how, how good should the location be? And uh, often this is done at the, at the level of roads. And two years ago, uh, the only alternative that we had and that our customers had was to choose between Navtech and Taylor Atlas. And I hope that um, OpenStreetMap could change that situation. And that's why we uh, wanted to assess the quality of OpenStreetMap. So um, the solution uh, we had is that we, um, we wanted to compare it to a market leader, in this case, Navtech. And as it was done in the course of a diploma thesis by Ina Ludwig, we wanted to reduce the complexity, so we excluded motorways. So motorways are not uh, populated, and, and so there are no household potential data at, at these roads. And uh, we included attributes, and we wanted the whole approach to be easy to reproduce, and we reproduced it um, just uh, a few months ago. So I, I will show you now uh, the changes in the last two years. So um, the method is, is published in Ina Thesis, and you find a publication at Agile this year. So the question I'm, I'm addressing today is what has changed? And we used a new OpenStreetMap data, but we compared it with the old NAFTEC data. This was done in the course of an information systems lab at the University of Bonn, and this time done by Haolin Zi and Deepti Gupta. So here, here you see um, a major, a major result of, of the approach. This is a matching table, which contains um, matching pairs of OpenStreetMap and NAFTEC IDs and uh, matching attributes, which we want to compare. And it is an end to end table. Oh, sorry. Um, this morning I asked about uh, licenses, and, and for instance, I, I was wondering whether such a table would be a derivative database and therefore I have to be published in the future. So the table below shows you the quantities we were working with. So the NAFTEC data and the two OSM data sets. So the number of objects that were input, the number of objects that were left after removing motorways, and the number of objects left uh, that have matches. And the table on top gives you the conclusions. So first conclusion is that um, OSM covers a much higher percentage of NAVTEC in the meantime, from 58 to 77. This is quite remarkable. If we turn it around and ask how much um, of OpenStreetMap is covered by NAFTEC, we see that this is increasing, which uh, indicates that uh, OpenStreetMap is eliciting ways that NAFTEC is not eliciting. Also interesting is the last row, which says that the number of NAFTEC objects per OpenStreetMap object is decreasing. And this seems to indicate that uh, OpenStreetMap objects seem to become smaller. So uh, a NAFTEC has to, to, end, uh, to introduce a ob new object at every intersection, and OpenStreetMap doesn't necessarily have to do that. So um, we uh, computed quality, relative quality measures for object completeness, for positional precision, which in our case means uh, do, do the matching partners lie in a 5, 10, or 30 meters buffer? Then um, existence of the properties one way, pedestrian precinct and footpath, and then the speed limit attribute. 
And, and the approach is always the same. We first choose in one data set a set of objects, like all roads in a city, all roads in a district, all roads of a particular category. And then we consider the subset that has matches and that has the property we want to evaluate. And then we consider the subset where the matching partner also has the property we want to, to study and possibly also uh, the value that is comparative. And in any case, we get a percentage. So here on the left um, is a, a, a map produced by Ina. So we have, um, we have five classes. They are equally filled with districts in Germany. So every class has about, about the same number of districts. And we had five classes. And we use the same class borders for our new map. And you see that there are practically only two classes left. So three classes of uh, completeness have been removed because, because data has become so complete at the level of districts which I think is, is quite an impressive uh, improvement. Yeah, um, this is the, the, the old East and West Germany. And uh, if, if, you, if you look um, at, at the border, so we have, we have something called a green band, where, where we, where we pre try to preserve the nature, which has all, all the plants that have grown in, 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 uh, to the right and left of, of the wall. And uh, I found it very nice to see this green band in, in, in this quality map. This is another picture produced by Ina, now not on the level of districts, but on the level of road categories. And the, her conclusion was that um, the precision now in terms of being in the five meters buffer um, was better for non-motorized ways or roads. So the green bars are, are, are the percentage of objects that lie in the five meters buffer. And on, on the right-hand side, we have produced the figure, um, and I've indicated to you tertiary, primary, and secondary roads. And, and uh, you see that the green bars have become much longer, which means that uh, the precision for, for motorized ways and roads has also improved very much. Now, a few, a few diagrams for Germany's largest cities. So the, the top diagram, um, so we have blue and, and red points. Blue are, are old data and, and red points are new data. And uh, on, on the top we have uh, whether the speed limit property exists at all. And you see that the, the red points are, are dropping down. That means the percentage where speed limit attribute is missing is, discre is decreasing. So we get more speed limit attributes. Um, the, the diagram below is about um, those cases where speed limit exists in OpenStreetMap. And, and then the question is, uh, is the given speed limit comparable to that in NavTech? And, and the higher the, the, red, the red points, the more we have comparative speed limit values in both data sets. And this is rising. But you see that uh, in both cases there is still potential for improvement. Then I have um, a diagram on object completeness, which we saw was, was already very good at the level of districts, now at the level of, of the top cities. And you see that, that they are all between 90 and 100 percent. So this is really, really very impressive. Um, oh, name completeness got lost. It got lost, sorry. <laughs> so, um, Name complete list. This is still quite a mixed picture. So, so we, we have, um, it is improving, but it is very different depending on the city. Um, then we have again, um, then we have one-way completeness, and, and you see that, that this is improving for the cities. So we have the red points mostly between the 80, above 80 percent. 
And uh, precision, again, at this, now at the level of cities compared to the level of, of road categories before, precision is very good between uh, ar around 90%. So around 90% of the objects in the cities are within the five meters buffer. So my last diagram, um, uh, Ina also looked at cities where the quality is quite heterogeneous. And on the right, you see that, that the picture is, is getting more homogeneous. For instance, in Osnabrück, we had practically no, no um, speed limits. And uh, they have now speed limits of um, 40, 50 percent. Or in Solingen, we had a high, a high um, completeness of names. We had 90% of the names complete, but only 50% of the objects complete, which was quite a strange situation. And now both are uh, above 90%. But Soling is also a case where the speed limit is still very low. This has not, not really improved in the last years. So um, these diagrams were produced yes, just in, in the last days because the matching table that we produce, was produced on, only very recently. And um, we should do this analysis more and more thoroughly and more carefully um, and maybe write a paper. Also, we could, um, could compare the, the new OpenStreetMap data with new NAFTEC data, which we have available um, and, and given, given that the complete, completeness is now so high, I think it's also worthwhile to study um, the completeness of NAVTEC um, relative to OpenStreetMap. This was a question that I was asked in Agile, and I think it is really a valid question now. Um, an old plan is to extend the matching to all roads, and. Um, also to extend it to points of interest because they are interested in business geomatics. So when I, um, when I prepared myself for this conference, I also studied in more detail, detail the licenses. That's why I was asking in the morning. And um, actually, I, I came here and was convinced that uh, the idea of being able to, um, to use data that was, um, was, is associated with NAFTEC to transfer this to OpenStreetMap and use this for OpenStreetMap so that we can, can do projects with companies uh, like uh, very small enterprises. So um, I believe that this was not feasible anymore because w it would be a derivative database and we would have to publish the derivative database and you don't get the attributes that we need for business geomatics to be published. But I had talks with three persons, three important persons from OpenStreetMap. I got three different opinions, but, um, but at least the, the last two, they said um, it, is, it is the intention that we still can, can continue this work. Definitely that we can continue to do comparisons, but also that we can, can use OpenStreetMap uh, as a substitute for, say, NAFTEC in, in, in our projects uh, be, because we can associate this with data. So I'm, I'm leaving this place uh, more optimistic than I came. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions? Hey, an obvious question. Have you compared the difference? Have you compared the data where the difference is between OSM and NAFTEC? Because actually NAFTEC is also not ideal and because of their six or three month release cycles, they lag behind the data. And for example, if you take the speed limits where there is a disagreement between OpenStreetMap and NAFTEC, it may very well be that OpenStreetMap is closer to the real truth than NAFTEC. So have you compared it to the real values, or maybe does it make sense to compare it to some third party provider like Google or Teleatlas? We didn't look at the reality. 
So this is a comparison based on a reference data set, as other comparisons do as well. And no, we didn't do a mapping between NAVTEC and TELA Atlas so that we could uh, uh, evaluate the quality of NAVTEC relative to TELA Atlas. Doing such a mapping is, is a substantial effort, and we didn't have another diploma thesis. Hello, I just wanted to know if you have any indication uh, about how much NAFTEC did evolve, evolve, evolve uh, since 2008. Um, do, do you, I, I think you used the old data, so 2008 to 2011 to compare this. And uh, do you have you an estimate if it's been 10% or 50% or 100% different? I could answer that question if we have done the, the comparison of OpenStreetMap uh, 11 to the new NAVTEC data, because then I, I also know the new NAVTEC data. I believe there is not much change. We think that it is very, very close to truth concerning motorized ways. And, and, and there are many, and as we have seen, there are many non-motorized ways that are not in NAVTEC. And, and this is another point where I said I w we, would, we should study the completeness of NAVTEC relative to OpenStreetMap. This is not the case. Thank you.